Good evening and welcome to Monday Nights on Police TV. And tonight we're going to be talking to Paul Halsey, who's uh, the founder and chief executive of, uh, CEO, sorry, of Purity Brewing. And we've got reports from uh, our Wales correspondent and one or two other lovely delights, including a little bit of fleecy history for you. Um, but and what we're going to do, first of all, is go to those Welts correspondents and tell you a little bit about their garden. Hi Fleeces, it's the Welsh correspondent again. Unfortunately, nothing much more to show you apart from my garden, but it's looking rather nice at the moment. Lots of colourful flowers and the weather, of course, has been glorious. The big thing, the really interesting thing I have to show you is my newly painted table and chairs. I've been asking Spike to do these for four years, but of course we're normally busy with festivals at this time of the year, so there are some advantages to lockdown. <laughs> Take care, all of you. Bye. Now, going back into the 1800s, the lovely Anne Phipps, nay Anne Bird, there was a, a licensee here of the Fleecing, and she was an amateur artist and painted this lovely picture called Home. This was before she had a baby, but this was her thinking about her home. And this doorway is uh, what now leads out onto Bird Lane, so the one that's often shut when you come into the police. Um, so they sat in the corridor there, and they're with basically a back behind the bar. And this is from 1886. And, um, this, along with the other painting I'm going to show you, were just, when I first arrived, were just stuck in a corner of the garage, um, which I resurrected them, got them out, and got them hung up. And um, so that was one piece that she did, and the other piece that she did, these are in the dugout, by the way, should you wish to see them in due course. This one is called St George and the Dragon. And, uh, 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 uh. and you can see it's a bit dandwiched. And this is because uh, this got in the fire. You can see it's kind of scorched there, just perhaps where the devil breathed out rather, uh, sorry, where the dragon breathed out rather aggressively and in the middle of his fight with St George. But that's, uh, again, that was by Anne Phipps. Um, this was 1886, so. I thought he wasn't wearing any clothes then. No, he's, no he is wearing, St George is wearing some clothes. Apparently, the dragon's not. The dragon's not wearing very much. Uh, but so there we go. There you go. That's your flee fleecy insight for this evening. Um, but now I'm very pleased to be able to have a chat with uh, a friend of mine of some um, 15 years or so. Um, uh, Purity were um, launched Ubu uh, back then as one of their first beers, and we at the Fleece were the first to take it. And this is a conversation I had with. Paul Halsey a little earlier on today. So I'm joined here today in the depths of the highly choreographed police office uh, by uh, a good friend of mine who I've known for many a year, a chap called Paul Halsey, who is the founder and CEO of Purity Brewery. Uh, Purity Brewing, indeed. My apologies, Paul. Welcome, welcome. How are you today? Yeah, great. Thank you, um, Nigel. And it all makes it all the better seeing you um, during lockdown. But um, with the weather being so fine, I think it makes it more bearable, if that, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. You're looking well, anyway. Are you getting out and about a bit? Because you, you've been up, up north, haven't you, for most of this period? Yeah, I, I, got, um, I got the flu 12 weeks ago. Whether it was flu or COVID, I'm not sure. I, I probably should try and get a test done, but... And then it went to lockdown, so I got stuck there. Um, I, I kind of, I'm from this area. This is where I'm uh, originate from, near the brewery. Um, but I, I've lived up there for quite a long time in West Yorkshire, near Hebden Bridge. Yeah, so being a, a life of 12 weeks of Zoom, um, Microsoft uh, calls and uh, Skype, um, which has actually worked quite well, but I've, I've really missed the people, the brewery. And my day job is very much about being out in trade, seeing likes of yourselves and customers and 
I couldn't have really missed that, as probably you have. I mean, I think about the first few weeks, it's quite nice um, to get a bit of a break, but then you start thinking, oh, I miss my customers. I miss, seeing, I miss having a pipe of cast beer. I really do. I mean, it's kind of craving for it at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, people have been known to come and get a takeaway of, cask, of your beer, actually, from here, yes. and then sit just outside in the cross. So I don't know what that kind of... Brilliant. You know. Yeah, just well, I mean, I'm going to do. I've got a bit of a team meeting, um, just with a, a few that are working here, and we're going to put a bit of cask on and social distance and have a pint uh, next week, I think. But yeah, so yeah, no, good. It's uh, yeah, it's some real times. It's quite surreal um, as a business. I, I think we reacted pretty well to it, but um, yeah, it's tough. And you, you obviously, you, you, I imagine, because the um, demand dropped through, you know, through the floor, didn't it? I imagine you had to um, furlough quite a lot. But you also, you, you kept a team on as well, didn't you? Um, yeah. How's so that? It, been? It, yeah, good. Um, well, you, 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 your son works for us, um, uh, Nigel and uh, Elliot, and he was unfortunately furloughed. But you know, you have to cut your cloth accordingly. So when you've got 70% of your business in the on-trade, so that's, I've had total volume and turnover, 70% is in the pubs, restaurants and hotels. We, we, we had to um, kind of furlough quite extreme. So we, we furloughed between, around about 65% of our staff. But surprisingly to us, our online shop has gone for the roof. Um, probably the same for every brewery that's got a decent online or e-commerce platform. So we're doing big numbers in there, you know, 900 orders a week at the moment going for that. The supermarkets that we trade with have done well. We've seen an uplift around 20, 25% versus normal on that. And then we're seeing pubs like the Fleece, uh, the Butcher Social in Bre um, Henley and, and others open up as pop-up shops that do like a grocery offer. So they might offer bread, meat, veg, but beer to take away and you, the entrepreneurial types have done really well at that. So we, we've done better than we thought. Um, obviously we're waiting to see what happens on the 4th of July when pubs allegedly can open, but it's going to be tough. I mean, I, I know the big boys are gearing up the likes of Mitchells and Butlers and Weatherspoons and Enterprise for that day. A lot of the independents that we deal with, are still very unsure, and, and I suppose a pub like yours, internally, if it was winter, to socially distance is virtually impossible. Yeah. Um, fortunately for you, it's going to open in July, and you've got a big bloody beer garden, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, no, we're, we're yeah, it's been difficult furloughing, and we've had to bring some people back, you know, um, kind of month end accounts and stuff like that. But the team that have been here have done a marvellous job. It's been tough. I think it's not just the workload. I think it's the mental stress. I think this, this um, we're, we're, we're programmed for normality in, in terms of knowing what's happened and, and where there's a massive unknown and it's gone on for three months. I think it's quite stressful for everyone and we're seeing a lot of that and you know, having to give a lot of support. And, you know, and I found it difficult, you know, when you've got a business and you see it kind of, say collapse in front of you, you see you, where you've got 70% of your business just virtually go overnight is, is, is quite tough. But we've done, we've reacted really well. The team that have been in place have been exceptional. I can't say any more than that, Nigel. That's, uh, and, and I, I think people rise to the challenge, don't they, really? That, you know, when, they, when it's difficult, people do step up to the mark quite often. Now, can I just um, just ask you about um, the, the future? What do you think in terms of what your kombucha? Sort of <laughs> no, not kombucha. No, I'm drinking. That's why I've lost so much weight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <We're Yeah. laughs> you wouldn't have thought that would have happened, would you? No. It's been sat, it's been sat there for months. No, it hasn't. No, I actually. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, I mean, do you see um, what's what's your, your um, how do you think it's going to pan out for the industry and for you know for pubs generally? How do you, and for yourself in that sense. Yeah, I, th I think um, it's like looking into, um, it's like putting a finger up in the air sometimes, isn't it? I mean, it, it, I think with the on-trade, I'm not sure anyone knows what's going to happen. And I've, I've spoken to all the national companies and, and independent and multiple operators, and no one has a clue. They're getting set up 